Okay, everybody, we're back. We're live in Santa Clara, California, Strata, day one. This is our second year at the Strata Conference, and uh, I'm here with Alex Williams and Jeff Kelly. Alex, of course, is the editor-in-chief of, of Services Angle, and Jeff is Wikibon's lead big data analyst. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thanks for uh, hanging with us here. It's, uh, it's 9 o'clock East Coast time, so thank <laughs> you for hanging with us as well. And uh, we've covered you know, a little bit of ground today. Um, we did a lot of sort of setting up for the, yeah. the day. We talked about the, the marketplace, and Alex, we just had a really interesting guest on, uh, Ron, former Quantcast, um, now with Think Big Analytics, talking about some of the important services aspects of, uh, of big data. And Jeff, in your report, services was, I think, you know, 40, 45 percent of the pie. Yeah. So, you know, services yeah. always the biggest business, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah really services is, is going to play a huge role in big data because, as we all know, there's a huge talent shortage. Um, of both the kind of the Hadoop, the engineering level, as well as data science. Uh, so services is going to play a huge role, both in the technical uh, technical areas as well as um, actually doing some of the analytics. Talk a little bit about that. In what shape and form are you and Alex you seeing services, um, and how is it different from the kind of traditional break fix stuff? Well, you know, I was just out talking to some folks from Impetus and their uh, consulting group, and they focus on big data and doing analytics and they've been doing it for a few years and what's interesting is like they have this big you know the o'reilly actually has you know a uh, something you can put on your lanyard that says we're hiring and every one of them had it yeah. oh i need one of those yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and i want i walked up i said you don't want to hire me but listen i got some questions for you <laughs> and what, what they're saying is that there is just, just a huge, huge shortage. And I think what it goes back to what we were hearing um, said earlier with some of the guests, that education is just critical. And there's a, a, there's a lacking ecosystem out there. And those two things combined make it very difficult for companies to adopt big data really at all. And so we're, you know, it might sound cliche, but yes, we are right at the beginning here. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with that. Um, I think, I mean, one of the one of the big one of the things holding big data back is uh, a lack of understanding, just confusion among uh, traditional enterprises. What is big data? How is it going to fit into my uh, current uh, data infrastructure? Because you know, these big companies have invested millions and billions of dollars in data warehousing and BI technology, and they don't want to just throw that out. So you know, there's a lot of confusion about about how big data is going to fit into your current landscape. You know what use cases or big, or, or big data use cases, what use cases are maybe more traditional data warehousing use cases. So yeah, I mean, there's just a, a lack of education around big data and uh, that, that needs, to, needs to, education needs to happen. I, I, yeah. I think there's, a, there's a, a, a very much of a large cultural shift though that will make this much more accessible. And I think you see it in such things as, it may seem like abstract, but like the maker movement. And the maker movement is all about bringing the software into like tables and chairs and and you know and vehicles and doing all these different kinds of things that really require very sophisticated technologies but also using lots and lots of data and so really it, this culture of of doing which is really about the web this culture of doing and of and of creating things that's going to really going to be the impetus and and, and it will have to just grow organically so we have a, a number of guests tomorrow. We're going to kick it off with uh, Mike Olson of, of Cloudera. He's the CEO. Uh, Mike Olson was one of the first people that I interviewed with my uh, co-host John Furrier down at uh, Hadoop World in 2000 and, when was that, 2010. And um, Mike gave me an education on, on Hadoop and I said, wow, after being at Hadoop World, this is something that we really have to invest in at Wikibon. That's really how we brought on Jeff Kelly and, and you know it's exploded since then with Wikibon and Silicon Angle. So Mike's coming on and we're going to have um, Amy O'Connor of Nokia who was on at Hadoop World mm -hmm. in uh, last fall in New York City, a practitioner of, of Hadoop and um, she's coming on. Chris Moody from Ganip. Ganip sells data like the Twitter firehose so excited about having those guys on. Some of the other folks uh, 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 data Stacks is coming on. Uh, Sandy Steyer of 1010 Data. Uh, Rob Metcalf, not the Bob Metcalf, a different Bob Metcalf of uh, Digital Reasoning. <laughs> um, Pentaho is going to be on Talend. Uh, Schmarzo's coming back for uh, another appearance. Jack Norris, VP of Marketing at MapR. We got some really interesting discussions we've had we uh, with him, and 
excited to have him on, um, talking about that whole ecosystem development, what's happening there. Revolution Analytics, Dave Rich, who's the CEO, is coming on. Uh, James Phillips, who's been on before, Couchbase. Mm -hmm. They're doing some interesting things. And, uh, and a number of other guests, um, VCs will be on, some, some drive-bys, no doubt, uh, people that we, we see. We've got some room in the schedule. And then spotlights, Jeff. We've got some couple of spotlights coming up this week. Talk about those a little bit. All right. Well, uh, one you mentioned, Cloudera, um, is, is a spotlight sponsor, the Cube. So we're going we're gonna to be speaking with Mike, as, we mentioned, uh, as you mentioned. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the news that Cloudera has made in the last couple of days. But going to move into uh, kind of going to explore the, the real-world use cases uh, for Hadoop at this point, and so how they're really being, how so it's really being used. So spotlights are topical, and as Jeff right. said, they're sponsored. So we're going to talk about real-world use cases. What's what's the other spotlight? Who's sponsoring it? And what's the other spotlight? Uh, we're also talking to uh, Digital Reasoning. Now they uh, do some very interesting um, work with their product, their platform called Synthesis. Uh, essentially. Uh, automates the process of, of understanding human communication, whether it be um, emails, texts, whatever it may be. They work with a lot of uh, three-letter agencies, uh, intelligence agencies with the government, which I can't tell you what they are, or I'd have to kill you. But um, they do some really interesting stuff, and they're looking, uh, they're, they're starting to expand into the enterprise. So I think we're going to talk a little bit about how that technology can be applied um, to more, to, to, to enterprise use cases beyond just kind of what, what we're seeing in the intelligence community. Yeah, John Furrier was talking earlier today. He said that, uh, you know, we had talked about uh, 2010 was the year of what is Hadoop. 2011 is, you know, a big data is sort of the new economy. Big data mon monetization is sort of the future of, of our business. And John said that 2012 is going about, Two things, platform maturity and application innovation. And, um, and so I, I would like to hear you guys, hear your opinion of that. What, what does that mean? So, so I think he's right, but, but let's peel the onion skin on that a little bit. Um, let's start with, with platform uh, maturity. What are you guys thinking uh, uh, about platform maturity? Where are we at with platform maturity? And, and, and why is 2012 going to be special if Furrier's uh, prediction is correct? Uh, platform maturity in terms of platform as a service, you know, providers we're seeing a, you know, just a blossoming of that of that part of the market, and I think so far we're seeing leaders like Cloud Foundry really taking taking a charge. Heroku is still an established uh, player there, and you know you have companies like uh, Engine Yard, um, plus you have others like uh, 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 Tier Tier Three. And these companies, I think, really do represent the re represent the future. Though their their revenues are really quite small, but what they're doing essentially is they're they're abstracting a lot of the complexity that comes with developing applications. And so there's that real connection there. And when those, but the problem is, and I think it's still one we see a lot, is this this misunderstanding about how platforms actually relate to the way that you would, you know, in, in, in more traditional senses, you know, build your own stack. And so there's this issue, really, what it comes down to is latency. And latency is, is really becoming the big issue because you may think, you know, oh, yeah, as, you know, as the platform, oh, yeah, it's so much easier to, you know, to, to use our, you know, use our platform but if, it's, if there's any kind of latency, people are relating that to like any website when it's slow. You know, so they think it's not really working that well. And they don't really see the contextual difference between provisioning their own stack and seeing another website, how it compares to the platform. So that's going to be, I think there's going to be some need to really mature that platform technology so the application development doesn't seem like a laborious process. So, Jeff, in your big data predictions post last year, you said that applications were going to be where all the action is, application innovation. Uh, doesn't the platform have to mature before that can happen? Or can uh, they happen in parallel? Well, I think they can happen in parallel. Um, you know, I think Hadoop is a mature enough uh, platform at this point that you, you are, you're already seeing a lot of big data startup, big data application startups start to hit the market, um, developing uh, applications that leverage all this unstructured data that we're seeing proliferate on the web and uh, mobile devices, sensors, et cetera. Um, you know, in terms of bringing uh, Hadoop into a more traditional enterprise environment, I think that's, that's one area where this, this year is very important. Um, we're we're going to see a lot of proof of concept Hadoop deployments 
uh, go into production this year or try to go into production this year. Um, so dealing with all the, the, the scale, scalability issues, the security issues, um, user access, things like that, uh, uptime requirements, that is where Hadoop needs to prove itself. And I think that's where we're going to see this year. It's kind of, kind of going to be a make or break uh, in a lot of ways um, for Hadoop as a platform uh, in an enterprise environment as a stable and uh, reliable platform. Okay, and then, uh, of course, the other thing is um, that John mentioned is that 2013 would be the year of monetization. Um, I don't know if he said it that way, but the year of making money. Um, now, Jeff, if you look at your S-curve uh, in, you know, your OGIVE cur o curve in the... Uh, in the Wikibon report on big data, let me just pull it up here, big data revenue, and, uh, and it's everywhere. This, this report is all over the place. Um, so big data is big business. So when you look at that, that S-curve, mm -hmm. 2013, Furrier's calling for the year of really you know, making big bucks. Um, do you buy that? Is it going to take a little longer? I, I think it could take a little bit longer, but so here's your curve. Right. The um, so based on this, the steep part of the S really comes in a little later, 2014, mm -hmm. 2015. So Furrier's calling it 2013, I guess, and beyond. Um, what's your take on that? Uh, well, you know, I think you know, we are going to see a, a significant uptick, in, as, you, as you can see in our, our report. But I think it is going to take a little bit longer um, in terms of really monetizing uh, big data, because as I said, this is a year where we're really going to start to see uh, use cases, or, or I should say, deployments that are at scale and production, and and that is where we need to prove ourselves. Once that is proven, and we get to a point where Hadoop is not a unknown when it comes to um, enterprise readiness, then we're going to see, I believe, a, a pretty steep steep climb, as you see there in our in our report, in terms of vendors actually. Uh, Making a significant amount of money on this technology. Um, the other thing, of course, is the you know the application uh, development space. Um, I mean, there's just so many opportunities. Um, one of the you know the most exciting thing to me about this market is so many opportunities. I mean, the sky's the limit in terms of what you can do with this data. Um, you know, not all these big data application startups are gonna are gonna succeed, and, and certainly. Uh, Many of them won't, but some will, and there's going to be some really interesting applications coming out over the next couple of years. As those start to mature, you're really going to start to see them, uh, the ones that do kind of succeed, the ones that find uh, really impactful business problems they can solve. You're going to see them making some significant money in this market. So, Alex, you wrote a post, uh, I guess, earlier today, uh, uh, sort of some of the, the demographics and, uh, and the stats of people traveling uh, to the event here at Strata. Uh, you said developers travel an average of 2,346 miles to attend the conference. <laughs> That's something. I was surprised. I am too. You I know? think it shows kind of the worldwide community that you have here. I think you probably have people coming from all corners of the world here. 83% of the attendees are male. It's not so um, unusual, but it's... Typical tech conference. <laughs> yeah. 33% <laughs> yeah. of the attendees said the organization stores an average of one terabyte of data... Per day. ...produced each. It yeah. doesn't say day. Yeah, you need to say, update that each yeah, day. Yeah, each a day. A terabyte of data per day. Yeah. Yeah, now that's more like it. Yeah. Because we right. produce, how much data we produce today, Mark? <laughs> hey, Mark Hopkins, how much data we produce today in an average day of the cube? A, a, a quarter terabyte a day? And that's today. But today was like half day. Half day of broadcasting is a quarter of a, a, a terabyte, so full day, half terabyte, right? And uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty significant. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is, yeah, this is the data conference. You know, you can tell by those numbers. Yeah, good. What else are you guys working on over at uh, Services Angle and, and DevOps Angle? At Services Angle, working on a few stories, I'm doing more profiles on the storage players. I think storage is the is an interesting, you know, it's just an interesting story overall. There's a lot of interesting companies out there, and it relates so much to the, the, the competitive uh, landscape. Um, writing about Hadoop and big data, writing more, writing a longer post on Hadoop services. Uh, we interviewed the EMC uh, data scientist, and, and we're starting, we're going to look for some customers here in particular. Plus, uh, we're also, you know, continuing to work on you know, those stories that are about, you know, the 
what's happening with these leading edge cloud services providers or even these service providers that offer or software providers offer for instance NoSQL you know uh, databases and because that's really interesting in terms of what's really catching on and it seems like NoSQL is really catching on. Do you think the um, the data life cycle is changing as a result of all this this big data you know it kind of used to be okay I, I use it and and you know maybe I um, maybe I use it over you know every every month or every quarter end I use the data but but and then I archive it or you know back it up archive it is that data cycle changing because of the ability to ingest all this information into something like Hadoop or is there, is there a similar paradigm there? I'll just say something quickly and Jeff can add it I mean definitely the tiering of data is really happening we're really seeing that and with that tiering of data we're seeing different you know uh, methods for networking you know, network virtualization you know so I definitely think that data is much more present in the daily conversation and we're really figuring out ways for instance to use technologies like Hadoop to be a backup you know environment for uh, for data itself so it it just I think it really is a kind of a consuming topic for for people on a much more frequent basis yeah, I would agree. I mean, one of the beauties of Hadoop is it allows you to store pretty much all your data and make it uh, available to, to access for historical analysis uh, when it, whenever you want, as opposed to kind of archiving your data and it kind of sits there and isn't used anymore. So in that sense, um, absolutely, it changes the life cycle. And it also changes the other thing we need to change, however, of course, is, as our friend Abby Mehta from Truseda pointed out to me, you know, people have this mindset that, you know, we only have a a, a limited mindset in terms of what is available for analysis. And it's going to, we need to break through and, and continue the education and make people understand what to do. Well, you, you can store everything if you want to, theoretically. So uh, absolutely it's going to change uh, the data life cycle, but that has to be coupled with people understanding that change, understanding all the new possibilities, um, and understanding that now, you know, you don't have to sample data. You can take all your historical data uh, and run through it in, in, in myriad ways. In the words of Abhi Mehta, it's game changing, man. Um, <laughs> is he here? He is. I haven't spoken to him yet, but he will be here for sure. Is he coming on the queue? He's. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't have a definite slot yet, but he uh, is definitely coming on. He's committed to come on the queue. He's committed to come on the queue. He's keynoting uh, tomorrow morning, um, so I'm going to see if I can round him up. I think uh, also. You talk to him. He says yes. Yeah. I'll be. I'll come on. I'll get some time and come on. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right. So it I, wouldn't be a big data conference. I think there's no. there, there's also the opportunity this com this this conference to really find some of these hidden gems, these practitioners out there who are doing some really innovative stuff. The people at LinkedIn, the people who are at Basho, you know, these companies that are really very very innovative and their practitioners. Are, are living this stuff every day. Well, Twitter's coming on, right? We've got one of the lead engineers at Twitter coming on the queue. Uh, yeah, Nathan Mars, who's the who's yeah. the gentleman who actually authored Storm. So that'll be very okay. interesting oh, to talk oh, to him. Oh, fantastic, yeah. okay. That's good. Uh, they're real-time analytics engine. So that'll be uh, very interesting. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, the, one of the things about a, market, a young market like this is those early adopters that are really pushing the envelope are, are by almost by definition doing innovative new things. So anytime you can you can talk to some people that are actually doing doing this using this technology in the real world as such an early part early area in terms of adoption, uh, you're going to see some really interesting use cases, some innovative approaches.